Okay, so we'll go back to another video. So here we want to prove a little formula, and that is to prove that L sub n, which is denoted as the nth Lucas number, is equal to phi to the power n plus 1 minus phi quantity to the power n. So this formulation looks familiar to you for any old-time viewers of this channel. This is actually the Binet's formula for Lucas's numbers. In a similar fashion, I actually did a video where I, we proved Binet's formula for Fibonacci numbers, where it said the right-hand side was written as phi to the power n subtract this quantity over here and then divide it by the square root of 5. So if you want to check that whole derivation slash proof out, you can I'll leave that link in the description below. What's nice is that the next formula for Fibonacci numbers will be actually be useful in proving the following formula for the Lucas numbers for the next formula for Lucas numbers. So how I want to outline this video is I don't want to actually just jump straight to the whole, you know, recurrence relations of what we know. I know a lot of people might be thinking like what defines as a Lucas number? This is probably new to you guys. So I'd like to start with the definition of Lucas numbers. Use a bit of uh, proving some recurrence relation identities we'll be using that will also help be useful to prove the following as well and then work our way from there. So actually and a bunch of those recurrence relations will was also used in verifying Fibonacci's numbers for Binet's formula as well. So they may seem a little familiar to you if you have seen it or not. <laughs> but anyway, from that from that whole explanation there, let's actually just jump right in. So what qualifies as a Lucas number? So Lucas number actually has that fit behavior just like the Fibonacci numbers where you take the previous term and add it to the, to the current term and it builds up the sequence, so on and so forth. Except that Fibonacci numbers start with your f sub 1 is equal to f sub 2, which is both equal to 1. And Lucas numbers, the first term L1 is equal to 1 and L2 is equal to 3. So you, the behavior actually acts as the same, but we just get different terms. So to write out this definition of a Lucas number is written as the following. So we have four different um, conditions to write. So we have that it's equal to L sub 2 plus L sub n plus 2 and subtract with L sub n plus 1. We have 1, 3, and then we have L sub n minus 2. Add this with L sub n minus 1. This is for, indeed, n is less than or equal to 0. This is for n is equal to 1. This is n is equal to 2. And then this is for n uh, greater than or equal to 3. So this, we can actually keep building up constructions of more Lucas numbers and then finding that little identity we need to use in order to prove our little formula that we are being asked to prove for. So notice that, okay, let's start with our L sub 3 number. So L sub 3 is equal to L sub 1 plus L sub 2 figures, as you know, we follow by the instruction, the, the definition. It's also worth noting that F sub 1 equals F sub 2 equals 1. Both of them are equal to 1. And I know I already said that, but we can actually write this in terms of like a combination of the multiplication with the Lucas numbers with that relationship, as I already said. So in other words, this can be written as L sub 1 times F of 1 plus L sub 2 times F of 2. The, again, it still maintains the same identity just like that with these numbers here. Then next, let's actually take a look at an L sub 4. So L sub 4 is the same thing as L sub 2 plus L sub 3. Okay, and in other words, we said that L sub 3 is equal to L sub 2, then substitute this back in. So plus L sub 1 plus L sub 2. Okay, and then using that, using the whole with Fibonacci numbers again and write this as a combination of those um, with both Lucas and Fibonacci numbers, we can write it at this following. So I have L sub 2, can write this as multiply with L f of 1, add this with L sub 1 times f of 2. I know it kind of looks a little weird to write it in this place because it feels like they're both equal to 1 so you can write it either way, but we can actually do a little bit of some um, simplifying slash just um, factoring. So we have now plus L sub 2 times f of 2 Okay, and so from here that I can actually factor out the L sub 2 from both here. So let me first write L sub 1 times F of 2, then add this with L sub 2 times F1 plus F2. And then lastly, because that F of 1 and F of 2, that's the same thing as F of 3 with that definition of the Fibonacci numbers. Again, same thing with the behavior, just different numbers. Substitute this back in. So I have L sub 1 times F of 2 and add this with L sub 2 times F3. Okay, so we're kind of getting something here with that behavior. So let's actually kind of make it a guess and say that for some nth Lucas number, it is written as L sub 1, 
multiply with f sub n subtract 2, add this with l sub 2, multiply with f of n minus 1. Okay, so that's a guess. So as you can see, with how do we need to prove this holds true for all the integers? We would, of course, would have to apply some mathematical induction. So now to do so, let's actually get to that step. So for induction, I wrote that we want to suppose for this above formula that it holds true for n is equal to m and n is equal to m plus 1 for some integer m. Okay, so with this, let's actually move on and say that we there's two numbers that we'd like to um, construct from here. So for first, I have that l sub m, and just plug this back in, is going to equal l sub 1 multiplied by f sub m minus 2 add this with L sub 2, then times F sub M minus 1. Now let's actually move on to the second number, so L sub M plus 1, then set that equal to L sub 1 multiplied by F of M, subtract 1, add this with L sub 2, multiply with F sub M. Okay, so now to put this together, so let's show for the M plus 2 term is true, so now L sub m plus 2, so that means I'll have that's the same thing as L sub n plus L sub m plus 1 from that definition. Okay, so let's actually substitute these terms into here. So put this in parentheses, so I have now these two terms. And so what's nice is that I can actually, everything else, everything of course is in with addition, so I can actually factor out an L sub 1. So L sub 1, then multiply with F sub m minus 2 then add this with f sub m subtract 1, then add this with l sub 2, factor out the l sub 2 again, so f sub m minus 1, add this with f sub m, and then now actually by of course using that definition with the Fibonacci numbers again, this is the same thing written as l sub 1 times f sub m, then add this with l sub 2 times f sub m plus 1, which is what's nice is that of course using the m plus 2 term to put this back in everything that actually works exactly as it should. Keep in mind that I have an index for m is some integer, so this is not the natural numbers, keep in mind. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go a little bit backwards and go to the previous term for m, which is n is equal to n sub m subtract 1. So that's um, what we have is l sub m minus 1 is equal to l sub m plus 1 and then subtract l sub m. Okay, and then now we just, again, put in that substitution once again. So with this, now let's of course factor out the L sub 1 and the L sub 2, just like what we did from before. So L sub 1, then multiply with F sub M minus 1, subtract F sub M minus 2, then add this with L sub 2, then factor this out, F sub M, then subtract f sub m minus 1. Then of course, using the definition of Lucas num or Fibonacci numbers from the definition again, then we can actually substitute to say we have L sub 1 times f sub m minus 3, then add this with L sub 2, multiply with f sub m, f of m minus 2, which is nice that if you plug in for the m minus 1 term, it is exactly the way as it's supposed to come out to. Okay. And so we just proved the statement for the m, n equals m plus 2, which is right here. And then for the m minus 1 term over here. So that holds true for n is equal to m and n is equal to m plus 1. And what's nice is we also did the same thing for n is equal to 3 and 4. So this holds true for every single integer. And so therefore concluding with by mathematical induction that indeed we have that this is the formula that indeed is the exact recurrence relation that we will be using. So going to the next step, we actually will be using this recurrence relation to in order to further prove or rather further progress to get to the proof that we want to achieve for. Okay, so just from the previous clip, we just proved by mathematical induction that the formula for the nth Lucas number, L sub n is equal to L sub 1 times F sub n minus 2 plus L sub 2 times F sub n minus 1 for some integer n that holds with the combination of Lucas and Fibonacci numbers combined. So using that, so actually a little bit of a trivia here that this actually works for the generalized Fibonacci sequence as well, written a little bit differently, but it works as well. So since L sub 1 is equal to 1 and L sub 2 is equal to 3, so moving forward, so I have L sub n is equal to, so L sub 1 is 1, so I have F sub n minus 2, 
and then L sub 2 is 3, so that means 3 times F sub n minus 1. So I can actually expand this out a little further and say this is F sub n minus 2, then write this out 3 times, so plus F sub n minus 1 plus F sub n minus 1 plus F sub n minus 1. Okay, and note that by you know definition for the Fibonacci numbers with that construction that F sub n minus 2 add this with F sub n minus 1 is equal to F sub n. Okay, and then also another one we'll be using is F sub n minus 1 add this with F sub n is equal to F sub n plus 1. So putting that substitution back into over here so this will yield us L sub n is equal to F sub n, so plus F sub n minus 1, then plus F sub n minus 1. Then again, use that definition again. So that's the same thing written as F sub n minus 1, add this with F sub n plus 1. And so that, of course, yields the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side over here. So this will come in handy. So now here's the next step that we're going to be using. So as mentioned, Binet's formula for Fibonacci numbers is going to come in play here. So for a recap, F sub n is equal to phi, the golden ratio number, subtract the quantity 1 minus phi to the power n, and then divided by the square root of 5. So we'll be using this to substitute uh, f sub n minus 1 and f sub n plus 1 term into here, which straightforward to see that, again, writing all this out, then I have l sub n is equal to phi to the n subtract 1 minus 1 minus phi to the power n minus 1 divided by square root of 5. And then we add this for the n, n plus 1 term. So of course, phi to the n plus 1 subtract 1 minus phi to the n plus 1, and then divided by the square root of 5. So we put this together as a common denominator, so I have now everything is just the numerator. So And to separate this out the way it's group, so with the quantities I'm talking about specifically. So I have phi to the n minus 1, add this with phi to the n plus 1, then we subtract. Now, this is where the quantity, so 1 minus phi to the n minus 1, add this with 1 minus phi to the power n plus 1. And then all this being divided by the square root of 5, just like that. There's two things we have to calculate. We have to calculate this term, and we have to calculate this sum, and we have to calculate this sum. And then pretty much, as we know, that this is going to yield the L sub n equals this identity over here. But how do we get to such extent? So. As mentioned, that some of these recurrence relation formulas are actually used in the verifying for Fibon verifying the formula for Binet's formula for Fibonacci numbers. But I'll go over this in um, again. So one of the one of the recurrence relation we'll be using is that phi sub n minus two plus phi sub n minus one phi to the power n minus two then plus phi to the n minus one is equal to phi to the power n. So how do you get something like this? So we can actually use that formula for the golden ratio number, that nice relationship that we have phi square. I'm just gonna write this down, then I'll just erase it. It's equal to phi plus one. And then what you can do from here is you can just multiply phi to the power n minus two to both sides, and then you'll just get the following. Simple as that. With that simple identity, now what we can do from this formula here is let's multiply phi to both sides. After once performing that, then we're gonna subtract phi sub n. So to write this out in full, so first step is multiply phi to both sides. So I have phi n to the power n minus 1, add this with phi to the n, that's equal to phi to the n plus 1, then subtract phi to the n both sides. So now phi to the n minus 1 is equal to phi to the n plus 1, then subtract phi to the n. Now putting this back in for the this term over here, because that's what we want to calculate. So now phi sub n minus 1, add this with phi to the n plus 1, then substitute this um, identity back into here. So phi to the n plus 1 minus phi to the n, then add this with phi to the n plus 1. So we have two of these. So now we have 2 times phi to the n plus 1, then subtract phi to the n. And then we do some more factory. I'm going to continue on this space over here. A lot of space going on. So I'll factor out the phi to the n, so now this will yield us 2 times phi subtract 1 multiplied with phi to the n. Then if you solve this out, in other words, well, if you simplify this out, in other words, this is actually the same thing as 
5 to the n multiplied by the square root of 5. So with this, that actually concludes one sum that we have to calculate. So that leaves us with this sum over here that we need to figure out. Is that 1 minus 5 to the power n minus 2, add this with 1 minus 5 to the power n minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 5 to the power n. To get such an identity like this, you use the you use 1 minus 5, that's the same thing as 1 subtract the square root of 5 divided by 2. Then what you could do is you could square both sides, simplify all this out. So that means on the right hand side, you'll get that this is 1 minus 5, that's left that's that quantity by itself, plus 1. And then now all you have to do is just multiply the quantity 1 minus 5 quantity to the power n minus 2 to both sides such that you'll get this identity over here. Now what we can do with this um, identity here, let's now multiply 1 minus 5 to both sides of the equation. And so that will yield us 1 minus 5 to the power n minus 1, then add this with 1 minus 5 to the power n, set this equal to 1 minus 5 to the power n plus 1. And then um, let's now subtract the 1 minus 5 to the power n to both sides. So now 1 minus 5 n minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 5 n plus 1, then subtract 1 minus 5 quantity to the power n. And so let me actually write the calculation for some of a different color. So now what's left is to calculate 1 minus 5 to the power n minus 1, add this with 1 minus 5 to the power n plus 1. I'm going to go over here. So now just substitute this back in for this identity over here. So I have 1 minus 5 to the power n plus 1 minus 1 minus 5 to the power n. Add this with 1 minus 5 to the power n plus 1. So I get 2 times this. So 2, then 1 minus 5, then n plus 1. Subtract 1 minus 5 to the power n. N. So if I factor this out, so I have 1 minus 5 to the power n. So you want to be careful when you do this. So this is 2 times 1 minus 5, then subtract 1. Then if I go back to over here, I have 1 minus 2 times 5, then times 1 minus 5 to the power n, which is the same thing as negative 1 minus 5 to the power n multiplied by the square root of 5. And so therefore, going to this conclusion over here, so I'm gonna just draw an arrow. If we just substitute everything in, so now I'll have five to the power n times square root of five, then subtract now negative one minus five to the power n times square root of five, all this being divided by the square root of five, that indeed you factor out the square root of five, that cancels out, and so therefore indeed that this is equal to the proof that we want to calculate phi to the n, then plus 1 minus phi to the power n, which indeed now completes, concludes, I said that wrong, sorry I can't speak, but which concludes um, today's video that we want to prove this nice little identity in relationship with the golden ratio numbers of Lucas numbers and also involving with Fibonacci numbers all together. So if you want to check out the whole derivation with verifying Binet's formula for Fibonacci numbers, I'll say it one more time, um, links in the description below. So um, there you have it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.